what is going on everyone so here we are on the free to play account and i got a big video for you all today as i mentioned i've been working on this for quite some time and i finally have the complete list of every single one of my store priorities things to think about using your resources properly as a free to play account this is pretty important and i will dive into more on what i mean going through all different categories and such as i've created a massive list uh, for every single thing in basically every single shop as many of you have been curious on what i'm going for outside of the overall executor rush as that is kind of the overarching goal there's a few different ways you can go as a free-to-play account you can go with the negotiator plus varying squads which is a little bit lighter of a farm in terms of ships but gives you a little bit of a weaker ship lineup and then stronger character lineup and potential you know for different diversification and then there's the executor rush which is like all in on ships still giving you um decent squads on the way there and of course opening up for future potential and that's what we're going to be highlighting today so let's not waste any more time and dive right into it all right so here we are and as i mentioned this is for free to play accounts so for those of you that might be in the light speed bundle categories or your light spender or whatever things could change drastically also i don't have some of the level 85 shops on here yet as uh, i want to go ahead and earn my way to level 85 and then talk about those stores more as well things might change as we get closer and closer to that level 85 but as i mentioned we have every single store on here if you want to check out the spreadsheet i'll leave a link to it down below no cool graphics unfortunately maybe i'll make some more um in the future for this type of content let me know if you want to see that type of stuff but i want to talk through basically the overarching goals of this and talk about each individual shop here so starting this off the as i mentioned overall arching goal here is the executor rush and because of the executor rush there's a few characters that we're going to be picking up mainly a lot of empire characters and the bounty hunter characters and so there are a couple different teams that kind of naturally fall in our categories and we want to pick up and are going to be really great for grand arena when we unlock level 85. there's also the consideration of okay if we're going for executor what are some easy teams that we can pick up outside of just the characters we're farming for executor in order to have real solid grand arena and arena squads and those are the two things that we're thinking about as those are the main sources of income in this game well starting this off in the cantina store and well i'll use this as an example for every other store we have a few things in the buy priorities the don't buy category and the buy priorities for various other things that don't include characters or ships um and in the cantina store we have a few characters in a row so these are the characters that i'd be picking up from the cantina store starting us off as a free-to-play account going down the list so farm chopper first as you're going to be picking up the phoenix squad and they're going to be an excellent excellent starter team because of captain rex you don't even need captain rex as a high star level you just need him to have his unique active for the team we pick up boba fett for the bounty hunter and scoundrel synergies stormtrooper han to lead us into luke skywalker and so on and so forth mainly the first three or four characters are the important ones and after that it really depends kind of how you go about things but there are some characters that are a little bit more generally useful and that's why they're in that order in the don't buy category you'll notice that there's a lot of different characters and across most shops because the way we look at the don't buys is are the resources or whatever we're not buying completely worthless or are they overpriced and the second thing is can we farm that specific character in a much easier place to farm for example in the cantina store we also have things like shipbuilding materials that we can pick up and that is absolutely worth picking up especially as a free-to-play account who's looking to prioritize fleet you're going to need a lot of shipbuilding materials let me say that it goes really quickly and so yeah picking up the characters is going to be great and that should be a priority but picking up those shipbuilding materials is going to be really, really exceptional. And so we want to save as many pieces of currency from the cantina store that we can, if we can, despite it being one of the easier shops. If there's something like an Ahsoka Tano or Jedi Knight Guardian that you could pick up from maybe another shop, or in the Ahsoka Tano's case, a Bronzium car that you're going to get naturally, you don't need to buy Ahsoka Tano with cantina store currency. It is a waste of currency. On to the next shop in Squad Arena. Well, this one is one of the easier ones to kind of fill out. As I mentioned, uh, with the Cantina store, these shops are, well, 
between the squad arena cantina and the galactic war these are like the quintessential easy shops in the game and so for this one yeah you want to pick up basically all the characters that you can from this because it's going to be the easiest way to get those characters on top of that there's a lot of the fleet leaders so things like tarkin akbar windu you're going to be using these fleet uh, capital ship crew members in order for you to beat challenges as well as get you more resources in the long run through those challenges and potentially set you up for different fleets in grand arena there's also some things that uh, you know some characters in here that well are kind of mediocre at the bottom so you might want to and could consider pausing on them until they become absolutely necessary due to the buy priorities over here such as prestige so you could upgrade your capital ship abilities credits and a few pieces of gear that I mentioned here and there's a lot of gear pieces that you want to skip in the squad arena store as I'd much rather pick up credits prestige um, or some of the pieces of gear that I mentioned specifically here so uh keep in mind that the squad arena store is mainly for those fleet leaders and uh well Kanan's also in there in the early game as for the galactic war store this is arguably the easiest one and uh, the one that you're going to want to focus on the most as uh, you're going to get 1200 currency for this every single day which is really really nice it's by far more than you're going to get for the cantina store and squad arena store so you can farm way way more characters and ships than you can in any other store um, on the list as for buy priorities you're going to want to mainly focus on ships with the galactic war store i like picking up zeb i like picking up cad bame and you could also consider um you know poggle maybe even higher up on the list depending on how you view things uh poggle if you're able to unlock the geos much sooner then poggle can go up in the list in fact um, i'm actually going to put him up a little bit higher here as uh, he does take a little bit higher of a priority here if you are able to pick up the geo brood alpha and get the geonosian squads but as for the galactic war here picking up zeb early on is going to finish off that phoenix squad cad Bane's early unlock allows you to use him potentially in any situation that you want to use you know bounty hunters in or uh anytime you know cad Bane fits into any of those specific challenges or events as for you know the majority of your currency it's going to go into these right here um you're going to want to pick up geo soldiers geo spies geo sub uh, um geo ships these are the top three and you want to save currency to pick up these at any point in fact mainly in the early game um, you're gonna want to save your currency and maybe just go for zeb because having that seven star phoenix is going to allow you to unlock certain challenges such as mod challenges which are really important you might not be using zeb in your main phoenix squad but having zeb as one of those characters that you farmed up allows you to use the full phoenix squad with the exception of captain rex who's going to be low star level in certain areas of the game so that's going to be pretty nice but for the most part every one of these characters even someone like poggle who's going to be really really important for the geo squad doesn't come relevant until you hit like level 85 because you're not going to unlock geo brood alpha or even have the ability to farm them until level 83 and so you have time for this and so the vast vast in fact like 95 percent of your currency should just be spent picking up as many ships as you possibly can in particular these top four are going to be the ones that you really want to focus on and these are the ones you're going to be using with your executrix lineup early on in the game and then you know picking up bigs a bar ends fighter the plo coons the sokotana this kind of sets you up for the galactic republic squads um and biggs just is a really nice rebel ship that you can potentially just get a lot of value out of but these four are mainly for that galactic republic lineup that you might go for with a negotiator as that's going to help you out a little bit later on in the game on to some of the more i guess you say exclusive shops and you'll notice that as we get deeper and deeper into the um stores here you're going to notice that the don't buy list gets a lot bigger specifically for the fleet arena store here this is what i want to talk about first so here we have buy parties for the characters the ships and the don't buy list you'll notice basically the entire don't buy list you'll be able to find within these three stores before and the same thing goes with the guild stores that we're going to talk about in just a moment things like resistance x-wing you can find the galactic war star so there's never a situation where you want to buy it with fleet arena currency same thing goes with tie fighter specifically because when we talk about energy farms which we'll do in a later video you could pick up these ships or some other currency or shards for these specific ships or characters in another way that's going to be far more efficient for you okay something like darth vader for example you can pick up basically entirely from the achievements you do not need to buy him for fleet arena currency and there's no real reason for it perhaps when you're getting closer to level 85 and you don't have a finished darth vader at seven stars maybe you pick up some shards there but for the most part when we're considering the doubt buy categories here we mainly are saying for 90 95 percent of the time there is a few exceptions here and there and uh well 
there's so many different options that I don't know if I can even go through all the exceptions here. But as I mentioned, things like Ahsoka Tano's uh, Jedi Consular Starfighter, these things, guess what? They're all in the Galactic War store. They're all in the Squad Arena store or the Cantina store, which is going to be a lot easier to pick up. As for the Fleet Arena store in general, though, in terms of buy priorities, well, there's really a few in here that I really prefer, and that's going to be ships mainly, as well as General Grievous. So as for characters, yes, there's a bunch of characters in here that are really solid, such as the clones, Rex, Echo, Cody. Um, well, Cody less so as he fits in more of like a, a specific clone lineup, whereas Rex and Echo fit in terms of the 501st clone lineup. And generally Rex and Echo are just more powerful clones. But General Grievous actually just creates a squad for you in terms of the separatist droids. And if you're going to go for like gas or something like that, you're going to want to pick up General Grievous, even though he's not necessarily a requirement. He's going to give you another squad. And technically, you could even use him with level one droids. And he can even sometimes solo on offense or even on defense a lot of early Grand Arena squads that people are not prepared for. As for ships here, well, there's really three in here that are non-negotiable at the top. And that's mainly because they're so rare to find. And that's going to be Razor Qu uh, Crest, Slave One, and TIE Advance. Now, you could argue against Slave One as Slave One is a fleet arena node that you're going to unlock very quickly but it's important to get these ships up and running as quick as possible mainly because they're going to be really powerful ships that you could just use inside of your fleet lineups really early on but also you're going to want to go for the executor which requires things like razor crest slave one and tie advance after you pick up these three characters or these three ships you're going to want to pick up all the geos okay the thing about these three is that they show up so rarely that you're almost always going to have enough currency to pick up the later ones on the list. And the same thing applies with, um, you know, when we talk about guild activity, unlike the Cantina store, and I guess uh, the Galactic War also falls in this category, but unlike the Cantina store and the Squad Arena store, these two are static. They don't change um, in terms of characters that you can pick up. But the Galactic War store, in terms of ships, it does rotate a little bit. The Fleet Arena store rotates a lot. And so if you can't pick up these three, they don't show up, and you're starting to stockpile a lot of currency, yeah, you pick up the Geos. And to be honest, all six of these ships are buy on site for the most part. Um, but Sunfac in particular of the Geos is the most important as it is the most rare out of the three Geos. And you can pick up the other Geos, Soldier and Spies very frequently through the Galactic War store. And you might notice some of the check marks here. This is only for my personal um, use. I mean, you can copy the spreadsheet and do it all yourself, but those are just to mark what I've finished so far. But as for Geos, these are going to be a really, really important, not only starter lineup, but even into the middle and later stages of the game, when you're going to use them with potentially the Malevolence and use a Separatist lineup, um, it's going to be a really nice way to, to get some very, very nice advantages in the early stages of Fleet Arena. And then we start picking up things like Phantom 2 and Ghost, since we're already investing in the Phoenix Squad, these are going to be a really nice 1-2 combo, uh, basically in every single random fleet challenge that you're going to want to do. And then we have a bunch of random other ships. But in terms of ships, these ships... I would take over any of these characters with the exception of General Grievous. You do want to pick up General Grievous when you do find him as a, it's going to be not super frequently that you can find him. And uh, it's going to be a really nice way uh, to set up a separatist squad uh, going forward. Now, for the most part, in every other shop that we've talked about so far, it's been about characters, ships. These are the priorities. Yes, in the squad arena. Yes, in the cantina store, you have things like credits, some gear pieces, some shipbuilding materials. But for the vast majority, and in fact, even when we talk about the guild stores, it's about characters prioritizing them because of free to play needing to kind of set up and not being able to refresh or get into some more advanced situations where you have accelerated things where you can just pick up and refresh shards constantly so you really want to make sure you're timing your hard notes correctly especially uh, well not hard notes but timing your hard notes alongside your stores especially for ships as for the guild stores this is where we actually start building out our roster in terms of not necessarily depth but um where you're going to be improving your top end. You're going to be improving your squads in terms of gear and getting those higher gear levels. This is where it comes in. Starting us off with the guild event store. These are the guild event tokens. These are the ones you're going to be getting from like Territory Wars, for example. Um, this is really important as most of the guild event tokens you're going to be spending are also going to be on characters. And the main reason for that is because they are unique characters for these shops that just completely change uh, the game for you. The Mark I currency is the most lenient in that you're gonna get a lot of the Mark I guild event tokens. Um, 
So you're really going to find that, well, you're going to kind of blow through them on some random characters or gear or whatever it is that you don't need to necessarily sit back and only prioritize, you know, your, your characters or only prioritize gear. You can kind of get it all because you'll run through the characters really quickly. You'll be able to unlock these characters very quickly. Now, Sunfax ship, the Sunfax ship here, and that's why it has a little apostrophe S, is part of the buy priorities for the characters slash ships here. And that is mainly because in the early game, you just want to get a higher level Sunfax Starfighter so you can actually get to top 50. Because if you can get to top 50, which is very reasonable, um, I'm assuming you're not like a super overloaded sh uh, shard with a bunch of negotiators, you're going to pay back a lot of the currency that you spend. And even not, even get to the top 100, that's going to give you a lot more currency and shipbuilding materials over the long run to make it worthwhile. As for characters, you have things like Wampa, Hermit Yoda, General Skywalker, Darth Malak. General Skywalker, Darth Malak are obviously really important and you want to pick those guys up, but you can't really pick them up unless you actually done the events and unlocked all the characters. So those aren't really a consideration for the vast majority. And so, yes, you want to pick up Wampa as that's going to be a one-man killing squad for Grand Arena. Hermit Yoda, really, really solid, especially when you get those Jedis kind of situated. Really nice addition there. After which, going ahead and picking up your Mark 12 salvage for your left side Mark 12 or Gear 12 unlocks and the Mark III Carbontes are going to be your main priorities in this store. Getting your characters to Gear 12 and making sure you have the gear for it is really important. And that's where the Guild Event tokens for Mark 1 come in. And as for Mark 2, well, this is where we consider other fleets. We have the Malevolence, we have the Negotiator, we have the Probe Droid and Leia Organa. Probe Droid and Leia Organa get a massive, massive caveat here in that while you should be prioritizing characters, Probe Droid and Leia Organa are not particularly amazing characters. Probe Droid is a little bit better than Leia Organa, hence why he's a little bit higher. There really isn't a massive use for um, Rebel Officer Leia Organa in a lot of these situations. And so uh, there isn't really a reason why you should be trying to farm up this character over potentially something like by, uh, the Chirotex and the Mark 12 salvage on the right hand side for your gear 12s. As for the ships, however, those should be prioritized over anything else. And you shouldn't even consider farming Chirotex, Probe Droid, Leia Organa, or any salvage for the most part until you've unlocked Malevolence and the Negotiator. Now, depending on where you go, Malevolence or Negotiator can be really good. As I mentioned earlier, if you want to go ahead and go for, you know, Umbaran Fighter, Plo Koon Starfighter, Ahsoka Tano Starfighter, Anakin Starfighter, and set up your Galactic Republic squad with a Negotiator, that's obviously a amazing lineup you can also pick up the marauder and start farming that as well however it is not easy to get to these nodes as a free-to-play player specifically it is not easy to get to the marauder node as a free-to-play player and so you're probably not going to be able to get a full seven star lineup with a negotiator instead i would rather focus on the malevolence for the most part simply because we are already building up our separatists and our separatist fleet and then alongside that, we are going for the executor. And so if you go for negotiator and you go for malevolence and you go for executor, or let's say you go with negotiator and malevolent or um, executor, the problem you might run into is that you've built up your separatist geos. So you'll have like three fleets, but you don't really want to use your separatist geos with the negotiator. You'll want to use your Galactic Republic, which means you're farming a whole nother set of ships. And you have an executor, which you need to build up and those ships as well. It's going to be way too spread apart. And so my advice is go malevolence in a negotiator. If you want to go prioritize Galactic Republic, then yeah, you could just go to negotiator and then malevolence and ignore executor. But it really depends on kind of what you want to go through. But definitely, definitely prioritize characters. And for the most part, there isn't really anything that you shouldn't be buying in the Mark II store. As for Mark III Guild Event Tokens, this is where we have the key characters um, that are kind of I would say glue pieces, not even necessarily glue pieces, but, 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 but characters that kind of power up their squads to the next level to where they actually become reasonable squads, such as Wat Tambor, Commander Sokotano, Kiati Mundi, Maul, and Boba Fett Scion of Django. Boba Fett being the least impactful as far as I've seen, but Wat Tambor and Kat, as well as Kiati Mundi, these three in particular are massively, massively important. I do think Wat Tambor is the most important. He just kind of fits into these squads where they just kind of become Watt squads. And what I mean by that is you just like buff up some specific unit and then you can come in and, you know, two, pre two people, three people solo, 
solo lightly as what Tambor kind of makes it so that your one character can solo Grand Arena. And uh, that's going to be really important. Not only that, but Wat Tambor is also specifically uh, or just really, really solid of a character. Commander Sokotana also really good, works with Padme if you don't have uh, uh, Jedi Master Kenobi. Um, and then when you do get Kenobi, you get to go ahead and bring Cat in and it becomes an absurdly powerful squad. Kiati Mundi works exceptionally well with Keller and Beck and some other various Jedi squads, just ramps up the Jedi squads. But these are very later game farms. So you don't really need to worry too much about it, but I do think Wat Tambor becomes the most high priority here. As for after you've picked up the characters, and by the way, you do not want to buy anything but the characters similar to the ships in Mark II because of how important these characters are. But once you do, Kyrotex, Relic Materials, all good purchases, just don't buy the Razor Crest. While the Razor Crest is the number one priority in the Fleet Arena store, Razor Crest should not be purchased with Mark III currency because you will get enough from the Fleet Arena store. And by the time you actually need Razor Crest at seven stars, you will have already have gotten it from the Fleet Arena store. By the time you reach level 85, you probably should have Razor Crest unlocked. And that's good enough. And then when you need them at seven stars, you don't need to spend Mark III currency. That is precious, precious currency for free to play players um, in order to get you these characters. Then we move on to the guild activity tokens. And this is very, very different. These are things from the raids, okay? These are when you, um, you're going to be doing raids. But we have the Mark 1, Mark 2, Mark 3. Um, and whoops, let me just change this real quick because we have the Mark 3. Um, but we also have the guild activity tokens. These are from um, basically just doing your guild activity every single day. Starting us off here, we have a lot of buy priorities uh, in terms of characters here that are kind of unique to the Mark 1 and... Uh, well, guild activity um, stores. Keep in mind that anything you find in Mark One in terms of characters, you could also find in the guild activity tokens. And so for the most part, you just wanna spend your guild activity tokens on these characters. Most of these are not a priority. There are, well, three or four that I, su I should say that are priorities. Sunfac um, is gonna be a massive priority. Colonel Stark, Dengar, and Poplu, all are characters that kind of are encouraged to unlock as you will want to use them for specific character unlocks such as like c3po with poplu um you don't even need to use poplu though um dengar is for the bounty hunters and if you run a bounty hunter squad you probably want him in there colonel stark for your early game imperial troopers and sun fact for your ships after that you could kind of take it really slowly on a lot of these characters i would prioritize characters with the guild activity tokens as the rest of the stuff is mainly for relicking up turning some of these pieces into relic gear, um, such as, well, as I mentioned, Mark III Nubians, Mark IV Biotechs, things like that. As for the don't buys, you might notice something similar. All of these characters here are either in Cantina nodes, in other stores, or something like that, or maybe they're just able to be farmed through Bronzium cars, such as Ewok Elder. I can't tell you how many shards. Just to give you an example of what I mean by some of these, let me just pull up my free-to-play account here um, just to show you like Ewok Elder. And this is one of the reasons why I've taken so much time on this list. Um, I'm level 79 right now. And if I pull up my Ewoks, Ewok Elder has 130 shards, already two-star. And I have not farmed a single amount of energy into him. This is purely from Bronzium cards, okay? So you will be able to seven star Ewok Elder by the time you actually need to use him. And this is the type of characters I'm talking about. Same thing goes to like Snow Trooper, for example. Ahsoka Tano is very similar. And a lot of these characters are the same way. As for Mark 1, uh, well, as I mentioned, there's a lot of the same characters, but a lot of these you don't even want to purchase because there's a lot more important things to be purchasing with Mark 1 currency um, for guild tokens here, guild activity tokens. But there are raid characters such as Han Solo, General Kenobi, and Darth Treya. These three are the top priorities. Alongside Sunfact, Colonel Stark, and Dengar. As I mentioned, these kind of three are somewhat more important in the early game. Dengar, you might even be able to slop off, uh, drop off this list. But as for Sunfact and Colonel Stark, Sunfact is really important, as I mentioned, with the ships. Colonel Stark, also really important, as you're going to be using the Imperial Troopers to climb in the dark side campaigns and things like that if you need another team for example those are important and then of course the raid characters are just really high quality characters and there's only one place you can get them so you want to pick those up after you've picked those up which i'm completely done here actually i should mark these off because i am completely done with all of these characters um, and i should do the same thing over here as well uh once you've finished off all of those characters now you get the fun part and Mark 1 Guild Activity Tokens, this is where you get the vast majority of your gear as a free-to-play player. 
uh, because Mark 1 tokens are, well, not only easiest to acquire, you also just get so much in terms of converting them to gear that it's going to help you gear to gear 12. Not only that, but there's also credits and shipbuilding materials in here. Credits, really, really nice way to pick them up here because you're going to be able to go ahead and sustain anything that you want to build out with these Mark 1 currency. So if you're ever kind of having a surplus of gear and not enough credits, Go ahead and pick up credits here and not and stop on gear same thing goes with shipbuilding materials if you really need to build out fleets and you will you're going to want shipbuilding materials and do not be afraid to spend your mark one currency here for shipbuilding materials and lastly omegas are going to be a huge bottleneck for any free-to-play player any free-to-play player that starts to reach level 85 as you'll notice here in in my account i absolutely need omegas and while they're not necessarily in the uh, mark one store they're in the weekly shipment store it is 100% worth it to pick up Omegas. And you'll notice here, I've stopped kind of upgrading a lot of my characters because I have like very little Omegas. And Omegas are the most important ability for the vast majority of your earlier game career because you're not gonna have Zetas to spend. Omegas are arguably as important as Zetas in a lot of different characters. If you're missing like, let's say four Omegas, but one Zeta on a character, those four Omegas are hugely important. You need to make sure you're getting those Omegas. And so picking up Omegas in this Mark 1 store is worthwhile in the weekly shipments. As for Mark 2 currency, well, we have things like Wampa, General Skywalker, Darth Malak, Hoda, Re Rebel Officer, and Probe Droid. Same thing goes, well, with the Guild event stores. Well, guess what? Here is where I find buying out some of these characters a little bit more important. Um, in, in this case, it depends, Probe Droid, Leia Organa. Um, I put Rolo ahead of Probe Droid um, here, and I put uh, Probe Droid ahead of Leia Organa here, uh, mainly just to show that it's up to really you how you find each character. I do think Probe Droid is a little bit more important overall, but let's say, you know, you want to build out a Rolo squad, or maybe you're using her for some sort of unlock or some sort of mission, whatever it is, it really depends on kind of what you're going for. As for the other characters here, well, you're going to find that General Skywalker and Darth Malak, and I put them ahead here, mainly to exemplify, well, when you're unlocking the guild event store, you're probably going to have currency before you can even have General Skywalker or Darth Malak. When you get Mark II currency, there is a chance if you're in a weaker guild where you are getting this by the time you actually have General Skywalker or getting closer to General Skywalker. So you might want to save your currency. However, you could really swap this around. Um, again, it, it really doesn't um, affect too much. Essentially, the way this works is if you have General Skywalker or Darth Malak unlocked or close to unlock, save your currency, get them to seven stars. They're going to be the priority. Wampa, Hoda, these characters, very important to kind of round out squads. In terms of other uh, other things to buy in the Mark II, you want to pick up gear, uh, gear 12 pieces in general, and your right side pieces in gear 12 are going to be slightly more important than your left side. And the main reason for that is there's some other ways to pick up left side pieces, um, such as in the guild event store, where you're going to get a bunch of Mark I currency, which you'll have more of because the characters here are less important um, than your Malevolent Negotiator, you're gonna pick up Wampa, Hermit Yoda, and then you can pick up you know, some left side pieces. And in just in general, it's a little bit easier to find left side pieces. Don't buy the Relic Materials or Chirotex. They are really poor value compared to the Mark, um, some other currencies that you can pick up, such as Mark III, where you can pick up a bunch of Relic Materials. Lastly, we do have the Mark III currencies, and this is all about Relic Materials. Um, as far as I've understood, I, I did some research into this, but it seems common consensus that gear to keypads are not worth the investment in terms of how much uh, currency you spend to get the relic materials out of it. You could just spend um, in terms of converting resources into other currencies. You could spend those currencies on other uh, gear pieces for your relic materials in terms of higher value. Uh, but other relic materials, all good to purchase. And then of course, Zetas. Um, you, in some cases, will be outpacing how much you could spend in this shop. And if that's so, you can pick up some Zetas. Or if you just really need Zetas, um, I guess go ahead and pick them up with the Mark III currency. Although I would generally stick to relic materials as it's gonna be a lot more valuable for your account. But that is going to be the entirety of the free to play store guide now when we do reach level 85 which i'll pull up on my uh my lights by uh, lightspeed bundle account here we're going to have things like the grand arena store um we're gonna have things like the conquest store. we're gonna have things like legend tokens you know the data crons and things like that and uh, of course these are much more you know specific and and things uh, much more things to consider 
And heck, even the things that I already mentioned, such as the guild event store, uh, you don't even see things like Commander of Sokotano, Kiyari Mundi, uh, Malevolence, or if you look at the um, guild activity store, you don't even see where you could spend your Mark III currency on unless you reach level 85. So none of this even exists, but it's going to help you prepare for when you do unlock those stores and you do actually have the ability to spend that currency. So I worked a lot of this video, guys. I did a lot of research for it, mainly because I was just excited for my own accounts and trying to prep for it. But hopefully this kind of gives you a guide. If you're ever curious and you're like, oh man, I'm starting my free to play account. I don't know what to go for. And I'll have more videos about this because again, this is where I've spent the vast majority of my time the last two and a half months, three months is researching all about the free to play account, where I'm going to be allocating my resources, what teams I'm going to be going for. And if you want to check out more videos from me, I'm going to be putting out more videos talking about, you know, which free to play teams I'm actually going to be going for and trying to unlock. And you might see some reasoning behind where the priorities lie in farming characters in each of these stores. For the most part, though, I will say with the exception of the um, fleet arena store and the galactic store, you really can't mess up the squad arena store um, and the cantina store. Uh, you can't really mess up. Let me rephrase. You can't mess up the Cantina store or Squad Arena store too much. It's really hard as there's not really that many options. Um, the Galactic War store, it's hard to mess up as well, but just note that you want to save a lot of resources for your ships after you've unlocked Zeb in the early game. Fleet Arena store, you do want to be a little bit careful on who to prioritize in your ship category. And then for the Guild activity and event store, this is where the vast majority of you know your errors can come from as it gets a little bit specific and can be a little bit tricky in some cases. So. Hopefully this helped. Let me know if you want to see more videos like this and hopefully you all enjoyed the video. I know it was a longer one, but uh, that's what we're here to do. Thanks for watching and I'll see you all for the next one. <laughs>